Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Iris Kramer. Um, and I'm going to be talking about how we are using AI um, to derive knowledge for national automated mapping of archaeological sites and uh, landscape features from Earth observation data, but also from historic maps and how um, yeah, clients are using it. So introduction about myself. So my background is in archaeology, um, but then I did a PhD in computer science specifically to develop these technologies to automatically detect archaeological sites. Um, and then it worked so well, the technology that I started a company which is called RKI. Um, and we've had like lots of different funding from different uh, funding bodies, which has been great. And then we've had our first customers with the National Trust and the Forestry Commission. Um, so we've been going for three years now and it's um, a really fun journey. So um, a little bit about the AI. I won't give you all, all the details of how it actually really works um, and what models we use because I think that would be a bit boring, but just the, the broad outline. So what, how the AI works is it uses um, uh, an earth observation data source or at least, or the historic map source, and then boundaries around where the objects are that you are interested of. So that could be um, with, uh, with polygons or with bounding boxes. And in our case, we mostly use polygons around to delineate where we are. We want the AI to learn uh, from an archaeological site, which could be a roundhouse or a small cairn, as you can see in this picture. And then what the AI does is it takes both of these uh, data sources and learns from it just like an expert would. So it learns to find these circle patterns, it learns to find lines, edges, corners, color differences, and all of that without us telling it, this is a line, this is a corner. No, it is, it's learning it internally, and that's also how we learn as, as humans from, from childhood trying to, to put a circle into the, the little um, the toy um, like that. So... Then it what comes back what it comes back with is a uh, an outline of an archaeological site that um, that might be a new discovery with a probability as well and a classification like this roundhouse that was discovered on the Isle of Arran in Scotland and um, it was a, a fun fun new discovery even though they'd already looked a lot at that landscape. So I wanted to like very quickly give you a few case studies of what we've um, already done and then move on to the more like nature specific um, uh, innovations or uh, national maps that we have created. So we've done some work with Historic Environment Scotland on the Isle of Arran, where we've looked at all these different objects that you can see in this picture. So there are trackways, banks, shielding huts, roundhouses, farmsteads, ridge and furrow, she, um, lazy beds and just a lot of the more common uh, archaeological sites there that we were able to train on and it comes back with all these like potential locations and so it, it, it very quickly gives you an overview of what might be might be of interest to then um, allow you to to further uh, assess them maybe in the field or, or on lighter data to start with. And we've done similar things in England, looking at large scale assessments of uh, Ridge and Furrow again, but um, also enclosures, quarries, um, banks and linear earthworks and such, and, and mounds and burial mounds and stuff. So, so this is uh, where I'm going to focus a little bit more on one specific object type. So we've looked at a lot at, at um, Ridge and Furrow with the Forestry Commission last year. In, we were looking at this in Northumberland to detect where the Ridge and Furrow is. Um, that's what we could already do. But then we've also added uh, more functionalities where we also wanted to find the preservation of the Ridge and Furrow. How, how well is it preserved and, and at what stage does it require uh, not planting with new trees for, for woodland creation projects? Um, and also understanding what dating does it come with? So is it from medieval period, post medieval period? because that will also change uh, whether it needs to be protected. Um, and um, then also we've been looking at like extracting more data from it, like direction and height. So in this previous example, you can see the, the different heights um, that it comes back with. And then you can create maybe a threshold. So let's say 20 centimeters is an, any, anything above we want to preserve. So the red areas here would be uh, required to be preserved in that case. And then looking at this, these datings, so as well, the same uh, area um, that came back as like good, good preservation also came back as medieval. So that area should be, should be avoided in tree planting in, in, in this specific instance. And then you come up with, we, we come up with a, like a, a data 
table with all these different kind of um, assessments from it so that you can do maybe research with it as well. So we've got like layers in there, like slope and aspects that, that might be able to, to give some new research uh, interests and by us recording this data for, for a new project. Um, yeah, we can do this um, at a much larger scale actually a national scale. Um, so we've now got this uh, national map of region furrow, which we, um, yeah, we've analyzed a lot uh, to find out as well where the AI makes mistakes. Um, so this is our national map. This is how the, the polygons kind of then look like. So you can see the dense area in, in the center there. Um, but also, yeah, as we were just zooming in and out a little bit, just to find out where uh, the AI is making mistakes, um, the red is what we in the end, uh, some, tr some, some new uh, classes that we came up with that the AI continuously was doing wrong. And I'm going to zoom into one area that um, some people might know in the area is kind of like the Salisbury area, but and, and anything around it. So um, I'm going to zoom into that and you can see these um, very specific uh, patterns in that um, in the data where it came back with ridge and furrow uh, detections for us. Um, but this is what we, uh, what we found is that they're not actually ridge and furrow, they are water meadows. So that's interesting from the AI that it kind of comes back with some different objects, uh, false positives, but also this helped us uh, to train a new AI to find uh, water meadows, which again, like super exciting to, to, then, to then have access to, to that data source. Um, but it also comes back with some other false positives like modern plowing or um, uh, waves in an estuary, so that those are issues, and we'd also have to 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 make sure that we uh, minimize those errors um, with um, with by adding it as a as a negative class, for example, it can learn to ignore those types of objects. So here's another example. So when we've been using historic maps, so this is a project we did last year with the National Trust, specifically looking at orchard detections and doing that nationally across um, England, Wales and Scotland. And so you can see how the AI here delineates these specific objects. And then, yeah, we can create these national heat maps of where uh, how has change happened over time. So we've got our map from 1900, which I just showed you, which <laughs> you can see there on the left, um, and there you can see that there's this very intense orchards uh, um, usage in like the um, uh, the areas of um, uh, De Devon and, and um, Gloucestershire and, and Herefordshire. Um, and then you can see that this is slowly decreasing over time. So the middle one is from 1950 and the one on the right is from today. So um, we've seen a lot of loss in different areas. And so National Trust is now using this data set as well for their own properties to see where uh, to, to, to grow new orchards on locations that they have been lost. Um, and as well to pinpoint which areas have seen most loss. So which ones should we prioritize over some others? So that's really um, exciting opportunities that, that are possible um, and have not been possible really before at this kind of scale. So another project that we've done is looking at uh, woodlands, so kind of similar approach, but then detecting um, woodlands, which can then also be used for woodland recreation projects. So if we, we just yeah, are able to make these kinds of national maps with that um, data source, Similar, we've looked at ponds, so um, uh, historic pond locations, and this is what the AI then comes back with. Um, the different types of maps, so some have blue colors, as you can see on these ponds, and some don't have uh, the blue colors, and the AI struggles a little bit more when it doesn't have the color to, to also use to detect. Um, and and it, it ends up making some mistakes, like it's missed this one here, um, and, and this disused pond here. Um, but um, yeah, then we, we, can, we can take in that knowledge and keep improving on these types of models, understand, oh, maybe we want to create also a map of disused, map, disused ponds because they're still of interest for us because those locations can also be used for pond recreation projects. So yeah, very exciting work. And then most recently we've been working on field boundary detection because um, that would be really interesting for hedges, um, uh, stone walls and, and understanding those and changes in the, the landscape based on those um, um, features. So here you can see the AI outlining where these um, uh, 
these um, uh, hedges are. Um, you can see um, here that there's a very straight straight line there through the middle, and that's something that uh, is an issue that also came back because that actually in this image you can see that straight line does exist, but it is uh, actually the ed end of a map sheet. So you know that's a kind of an issue that can come up that we then were it was able were able to um, to avoid by if there's a very straight line and kind of uh, want to avoid that kind of um, boundary. So um, then we can compare, we, we've compared that as well with modern mapping of um, field boundaries from the UKCEH. Um, and then we can come up with a map like this, which shows you where in red uh, boundaries have been destroyed, where in green they've been created and in blue they've been retained over the different periods. So then you can start uh, drawing out as well some statistics on like where have we seen the biggest loss, the biggest uh, gain um, and um, or, or, or no changes at all. Um, so that you can see in these maps. So this is for uh, national trust properties only. We have got a national map now. Um, but um, yeah, so well, it's really interesting to look at these kind of changes over time and um, destroyed on this side, you can see a lot of destruction around um, the uh, the east of the country. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's early stage for this kind of project, but it will be really interesting to see this kind of data being analyzed in more detail and understanding where, uh, on what properties, um, lots of change has happened or which areas have been less um, affected by change. So that's all, just an overview kind of, sorry, I was going to quickly say this has been just an overview of the different objects that we are able to detect to like a national scale. And that's that's really exciting, but it's most exciting what actually gets done with these data sets in the end. So we've got other data sets as well, like um, we've been looking at uh, detecting Greek, um, uh, peat, uh, peat grips uh, that have been put in for the, 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 the peat blocking. And so using those as well, maybe in the future um, for those kinds of uh, projects we heard about earlier or we've been looking at paleo channels. So, you know, bringing in all those kinds of data sets for um, historic land use characterization projects or risk risk uh, mapping. And, and that's where we see these, these data sets being really, really valuable. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to like speaking to anyone who's really interested in um, working with us on this kind of uh, data sets. Um, and any kind of uh, feedback that you have for what you think we should be working on next. And we will also will soon be hiring for like a GIS role to kind of analyze some of our data sets and work on different parts of what we're doing. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>